cataractcoach.com. Fluid misdirection from zonulopathy. So BSS fluid infusion gets into burger space and shallows the bag. So here's a routine cataract case, and you've seen this before. The end of the surgery, removing viscoelastic, everything looks pretty good here. But look carefully, if you look behind the posterior capsule, there are some tiny little lens fragments there. Well, how did that happen? Well, think about it. You break up the cataract in many, many small pieces with the phaco probe, and tiny little fragments can be pushed with the infusion pressure through the zonular support, and it ends up going right there in front of the anterior hyoid face, behind the posterior capsule. Of course, that is burger space. And so here's a more challenging case, though. Look at this surgery. Everything seemed pretty normal during the surgery. I didn't notice any zonular issues. But now look. Look at those two pieces back there. They're behind the posterior capsule. You can see I try to grab them. You see the wrinkles and stria in the capsular bag. That's not what it is. It's not on the lens capsule. It's behind the lens capsule. But the capsular bag, the posterior capsule, is totally intact. So what ended up happening? Well, there's obviously zonular laxity. Maybe there's a quadrant somewhere we didn't see or a clock hour of zonular weakness, absence, loss, whatever you have. And as a result, what ends up happening is these tiny little pieces can be pushed through that and again, ending up in burger space. Now, with this fluid misdirection, we also noted, prior to me putting viscoelastic in the capsule bag, that the bag was shallowing. And so why is it shallowing? Think about it. Hey, let me tell you about our podcast. Number one podcast of all of ophthalmology. It's called the Cataracoja Podcast. It's everywhere where you find podcast services. Check it out. Also remember, you know if you're a resident, there's a free book about cataract surgery on cataracoja.com, a free curriculum series. Really, check out the website. Anyway, lens in the capsule bag here. And now we'll get it rotated around, put it in a good position, and take a look. The toric lens has so got to be lined up. Yes, of course, those few little pieces of lens material are in burger space. So again, they're behind the posterior capsule. So if I go here behind the IOL optic and remove viscoelastic nice and slowly here, as I remove the viscoelastic, I really can't get those pieces. Now the question is, well, what do you do here? If they're large pieces, Let's say there's a posterior capsule rent. Well, you can't leave those. Patient's going to need a vitrectomy. If you drop a quadrant of a nucleus in the vitreous cavity, you need to do part plane of vitrectomy, part plane of lensectomy. But in this situation, look at those tiny little pieces, but bigger than you're used to seeing, but there's some significant pieces here of lens material. What should you do? Could you at this point do an anterior vitrectomy, go part plana, and just aspirate those two? Yes, you could. Do you need to? I don't think you do. They're going to dissolve in the cascade of inflammation. It's going to take a little bit of time, but they should be fine. Now, notice those are not nuclear chips. Those are little tiny fragments of epinuclear shell. And so those pieces, there's a patient dancing for you. That's the way you don't play music in the operating room. See, the patients are dancing. But let's finish the case up here. Removing the viscoelastic, everything looks good. It's got that toric lens in good position, good overlap by the rexus. And we're going to leave those pieces be. They're in the, in the, in the vitreous cavity. Again, they're in burger space. We're going to give some patient, let's give some more um, anti-inflammatory medicines to the patient. We're going to give some preservative-free triamcinolone. If you're wondering, well, how do you get preservative-free triamcinolone? Well, I only have the one on the preservative. Well, just, you know, there's a video on cataractcoach.com. If you search with, for the word triamcinolone, you can learn how to wash it and get the preserve out. Now, there we go. There's the triamcinolone. So certainly there's no vitreous prolapse. Do you need a CTR, by the way? I don't think you do. I think the patient's going to be fine and have a real nice outcome. And watch the patient in the post-op period. If those pieces don't dissolve, certainly you could always go back and get them with a vitrectomy. But I think in this situation, you'll notice those pieces will be gone. Just a little bit more time in the post-op period for healing. So that, my dear friends, is fluid misdirection syndrome during cataract surgery. Again, check out the Cataract Coach website. So much great material there. I promise you will love it. And if you're a young doctor, such great resources. And they're all for free.